router identity. That's a property that will allow to set a name for every router. So that information is important if we are in a network with multiple devices because we can identify each of those devices. If we are working in the terminal, for example, we can easily identify in which device we are typing commands just by checking to the prompt. Or we can check the title bar or on the neighbor discovery. We can see those devices there. To explore that functionality, I'm gonna use GNS3. So I will go to GNS3 and I will simply add two routers to the work area and I will interconnect those routers using the ether one. So now I will simply start those devices and I will add a cloud just to have access from my local PC as well. So if I come here, I will add a cloud and I will add an additional cable to one of those devices. After having those devices ready, if I open the Winbox in my laptop, I will be able to see those because the neighbor discovery protocol is enabled by default in those devices. So if I go here to the Winbox, you can see that now I have one CHR. All the remaining devices there are devices here in my office. So the one that is in GNS3 is this CHR. So you can see this column identity. By default, the name is Myrotic. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna click on the MAC address. I will type the default username, admin, and I will click connect. So now I need that virtual device. We are prompt to add a password. I won't do that now. And now we can simply change the name. So let's say that this device is gonna be R1 and the second router is gonna be R2. We can simply go to system and then identity. Now under identity, I will say R1 and I will click OK. So if we check the title bar, we can see here R1. If I, I go into terminal, I don't want to read that message, I will click end. This is asking for a new password. I will simply press Ctrl C because I don't want to configure a password now. As you can see here, I have the username at and then the identity of the router. If I connect it to multiple devices just by checking this terminal, now I know that I type in commands via R1. I can see that I'm working on R1. If I go to IP and then neighbors, ether one is connected to the second router. I will enable the labels here. So you can see ether one is the one connected to that neighbor router. If I check IP neighbors on ether one, you can see that the neighbor has the identity myrotic. And that's because we haven't changed the identity for that device. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to enable Roman tools, Roman, and I will enable Roman. And then I will go via Mac Telnet to the neighbor. This is something that we learned in the virtual environment section when we were creating that virtual environment. Admin is the default username for that device. There is no password in it. I won't read the software license. And also I don't want to configure a password. So now you can see that here I'm using the user admin and the identity for that device is Pyrotic. To change the identity via terminal, we can simply type system, then identity, set name equals, and then the identity. So this is the command system identity, set name equals to a string with the value of the identity, in our case, R2. So if I press enter now, the prompt has changed. I'm using the user admin and I connect it to R2. So you can see that in this terminal, I'm connected to R2, but if I go to the previous terminal here, I'm connected to R1. So this is a pretty good example of how the identity is gonna help to identify in which router we are working on. If I go to R2, I can also enable Roman by using tool Roman set enable equals yes. And now we have Roman here as well. If I come to more, 
new Winbox. And if I go to arg1, you can see that now the name here is arg1, it's not MyRotic anymore. And I can simply connect to Roman. And now the neighbor is gonna show the new identity. So you see here, I can see R2. That's the second device that I have in my GNS3 topology. If I click on that, now I have access to R2. I don't want to set the password, but you can see in the title bar that here I have R2, and in the other one, I have R1. If I check IP neighbors, now the router connected to Ether1 is R2. If I go to R2, and I check IP neighbors, the router connected to Ether1 is R1. So this is how the system identity is gonna help to identify devices in our network. It's a good practice to set a different system identity to every device. And if we have a network diagram, we must match the identity to the name display in that diagram. That's a pretty good practice that is gonna help when we are troubleshooting our networks. I hope that this class has been helpful for you and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.